Have you noticed how often you punish yourself with self-judgments or how often you judge others? Well, in today's video, we'll cover the top two things that feeds the judging mind and we'll provide you some actionable knowledge. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Dr. Les, and welcome to the Mindfulness Channel, a channel focused on mind-body information about chronic pain and trauma to help you be the best you and move towards pain and trauma recovery. If this is your first time, welcome, and please do subscribe to show you support. Share this with those you love. For those of you returning, welcome. Great to see you again. In today's video, we'll cover why do we have self-judgments? What feeds the judging mind? And why is it important to keep your self-judgments in check? So why do we have self-judgments? Well, it's our default mode, the self-judgment that is. But why, why is this often the default mode? Well, the mind is trying to be helpful, believe it or not. Say what? Yep. The judging mind is actually trying to be helpful so you do not make the same mistakes again. The judging mind is in service of your survival, but it tends to be very punishing. The problem? Self-judgments can turn and often do into shaming episodes, which leads people into greater emotional struggles. You're suffering. And if you have trauma or chronic pain, it tends to amplify those sensations in your body. It turns on your threat physiology. So what feeds the judging mind? Well, there are two specific things. One is believing the storylines of the mind, whatever the mind tells you. Number two, it's the aversion. What I mean by that is this, is that when you hear the judgments, we tend to do things to avoid that experience of hearing what the mind is judging us about or sometimes others. Remember, self-judgments often come from lots of practice. It's a survival habit of the brain. And it's a product of the unconscious parts of our brain system. And that activates the psychological defenses, which we will call the judging mind is one of them. It's like your brain says, hey dad, hey mom, me no safe. And then what you tend to experience is the psychological defenses of the mind, which then activates all those storylines, those inner critics and the judgments of ourselves and others. The point here is that self-judgment often shows up unconsciously and then our conscious mind takes over and we tend to experience its effects. For many of us, we may not hear these punishing thoughts, but we may actually feel it amplified in the body. And once again, I want to emphasize that sometimes we may not be paying attention, but you may notice panic attacks, tension in your body, amplification of your old injuries, and even flashbacks sometimes. If the judging mind is left unchecked, it'll leave you in a trance. See, if you're unaware of judgments that are influencing your choices, your behaviors, well, then you're just going along for the ride. The mind becomes the puppeteer while you act like a puppet in this hypnotic trance of all these judgments that it's influencing you on. If left unchecked, the judging mind physically wears us down, not just mentally, as if we work 12 to 14 hours, and it tends to be very controlling of all our actions, creates lots of anxiety, and that can be very punishing in your healing journey. Why does non-judgment matter? Non-judgment opens you up to more of life's beauty. Number two, non-judgment helps you get off the hedonic treadmill. And number three, non-judgment helps you see things clearly as they are, not as we are. In this brief practice, we're gonna do something called the three ends. Notice, name, and nurture. Whenever you find the judging mind dominating you, do this. Notice where you feel the thought that the judging mind says something like, I'm so stupid, or why do I keep doing this? I want you to take that thought and locate it in your body. And once you've located it in your body, then I want you to name it to tame it. You can actually say something like, 
so there's the judging mind. Or you could say, hello Judge Judy. Or you can simply say, activate it. This is an important step to get you to separate from the judging mind. And the third part, as you are noticing the sensations in your body, naming it to tame it, now enter into the third step called nurture. Here, you want to use the acronym RBS. And a great way to nurture and to get separation from the torments of the mind is to rub your chest or tap it. And as you're rubbing or tapping your chest, gently slow your breath down, making your exhalations a little bit longer. Ease over effort. And as you're rubbing or tapping your chest, I'd like you to do that now. As you're rubbing or tapping your chest, slow your breath down. Feel the flow and sensation of your breath. Feel the rubbing or tapping of your chest. And after you feel a slight shift or even a release, then and then only start to talk to yourself in a soothing tone, as if you're talking to a scared child or a child who feels shameful. Try this as you're rubbing or tapping, slowing your breath down. Now say this to yourself. Can we bring some kindness into this moment? Can we bring some kindness into this moment? Can we bring some kindness into this moment? And then notice what happens to the sensation wherever you feel in your body. You could even say, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm here for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please do share this video with those you care about. Until next time, I'm Dr. Les. Be kind to yourself and catch you at the next moment.